I can't prove it, but I'm pretty sure the number one obstacle to playing fingerstyle guitar with confidence is over here. It's the picking hand, and you know what I mean. You can get the thumb going in a nice alternating groove, and then suddenly when you go to put the fingers in, what happens? The thumb stops being consistent, you drop notes, and then as you try to focus on the thumb, you start to lose track of what's going on over here. So, in this lesson, I wanna show you a simple three-step process that will give you the groundwork that you need to play tunes, to play improvised licks, and anything in between. We're gonna take an alternating thumb in drop detuning and work out three different kinds of rhythms with the fingers in a way that you can focus on just the coordination before you start worrying about the licks, the notes, the chord voicings, all of that. So let's go. Okay, so we're gonna start with an alternating thumb and I'm in drop D tuning. So I've dropped the low string down a whole step to D. So to do an alternating thumb, we don't even need to use the fretting hand. You can just rock the thumb between the sixth string and the fourth string. And so we're playing on all the strong beats. So that means one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And we're gonna stick with that for this lesson. Now we're gonna play just one note on top. We're gonna to play a D up here on the third fret of the second string. And I've got index finger for the third string, middle finger for the second string, or ring finger for the high string, but I'm just gonna be using middle finger to pick this one note. And the first thing to do is just focus on playing quarter notes. So just play this note along with every thumb note. That's the first step. Just play those quarter notes. And what we're doing is isolating the rhythms for the different kinds of phrases and licks you might wanna play. And so the first thing is just to play quarter notes on every beat. And when you can do that, you can try then placing quarter notes on certain beats, like just on the first beat. Or you can work through all the beats, like right? you can put it on the second beat, That note on the third beat you can put it on the fourth beat you can put it on combinations of beats like say I'm gonna play it on two and three right there's a lot of possibilities but it's a finite number and you can work through them and the idea is just to get really good at putting those quarter notes where you want them while you keep the thumb going so that's step one Step two is to add in eighth notes. So that means if we're counting one, two, three, four, we're gonna be thinking one and two and three and four and. So now we've got eight notes spread out across the measure. One and two and three and four and. So we're gonna be playing on the downbeat and then after each strong beat, we're gonna play just a finger note on the and. So one and two. And since we're thinking of this as a tool for playing blues, I'm gonna play swing eighth notes, which means the, the notes on the strong beats are gonna be a little longer, and the notes on the off beats or the ands are gonna be a little shorter. And again, I'm just focused on the coordination between the thumb and one note on top. I'm not trying to play licks, just trying to get these rhythms hardwired into my hand. And so now, of course, you can do different placements over the thumb with the eighth note. So you could play on one and, or on two and, or on three and. And then again, you can make up different combinations. You could play on one and, two and. could play on two and three and four and. But the idea is just to really uh, get clear about 
what's getting done along with the thumb and where it's happening without worrying about playing different scales or different licks. Just We're just focusing on the rhythmic aspect for now. So that's step two. So step three is about introducing rests to the eighth note. So if we have, say, eighth notes on beats three and four, Now we're going to lay off of the downbeat of three and just play and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and that starts to be more the kind of rhythm that blues phrases and melodies are really made out of and another one that's really useful is to play all the eighth notes except the downbeat of one so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and when you can do that you can also take both of those that i just showed you and land on the next beginning of the next bar so the next one so if we were doing one two, and leave a bar in between so and two and three and four because that's what blues phrases do. They resolve into the beginning of the next measure. So we can do that with the shorter one too, starting on the end of three. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, one and two and three. So that's step three. And that's it for the exercises. But if you wanna know what this actually can do for your playing, Take a simple blues scale. So going up from the root to the flat third, fourth, and flat five of D, and then down to the flat seven and the fifth. And just take, say, that phrasing that starts on the end of three. So one, and two, and three, and four, and one. Now we can take that and we can apply it start to play licks using that rhythm but now because we focused on getting the coordination together first once we've gotten through that part of the process we can then focus on the ideas and the notes because the coordination is something that you've already practiced and taken care of and likewise you can do that with longer phrases too using that phrasing that starts on the end of one so So we can have two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one. And then, of course, you can combine those shorter and longer phrases into call and response ideas. So that's what you do with those rhythms that we've worked out to start to turn it into music. Now you can do this with an alternating thumb. You can also do this with the steady bass, but the idea is the same. You start with quarter notes, you move to eighth notes, and then you put in those rests so that you're always playing phrases that lead into the next measure. It's a really effective way to get the coordination between your thumb and fingers dialed in and if you're at all interested in beginning to improvise, it is the foundation, as far as I'm concerned, with starting to develop a vocabulary and learning how to build your own set of licks that you can start to apply to the tunes that you're already playing. And because phrasing is so essential to the blues and to music generally, if you're working on your phrasing in terms of improvisation, that'll sharpen your hearing and your understanding of phrasing so that as you're learning tunes, you can hear them quicker, you can remember them better. Working on phrasing 
by developing your right-hand coordination. I just can't say enough good things about it. In fact, I think these ideas are so important that I've created a whole series of lessons inside my membership, The Finger Style 5, called The Fundamentals of Improvisation, Volume 1, where I show you how to apply these ideas to the steady bass blues in the key of E. And this coming Saturday, January 14th, I will be doing my next soloing from scratch workshop. We'll be going over some of these same ideas that I've been showing you today for alternating thumb in the key of D, but in much more detail with many more specific exercises and a whole downloadable PDF with tab for all the examples that we're gonna work on. So if you're interested in signing up for that, you can go to the link below or the link on screen to sign up, or you can go ahead and join the Fingerstyle 5 membership now, which means that this upcoming workshop will be included with your membership, along with all the other song lessons, the archive of all the past workshops and live streams, and everything else that goes on inside the membership. If you've got a question or comment about today's lesson, please scroll down and leave it below. I would love to hear from you. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.